back to the woods again. The woods again. Back to the woods again. It's the Going On Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. Muse, how you doing? It is that time of year again. It is Grammy season. da 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 yeah so uh we got the list of nominations in front of us and uh you know i'm skipping right down to the rap category you know oh come on now we gotta fucking talk about the general field okay and at this point it isn't even so much who i want to win it's now just predicting who i think they're gonna pick yeah i like that who we're gonna pick versus who you we think is gonna win that's a good conversation so, for record of the year, up for nomination is Cardi B, Bad Bunny, and J Balvin for I Like It, Brandy mm. Carlisle for The Joke, Childish Gambino and This Is America, Drake and God's Plan, Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper, All the Stars by Kendrick Lamar and SZA, Rockstar by Post Malone featuring 21 Savage, and The Middle by Zed featuring Marin Morris and Grey. That's a loaded as fuck category, and honestly, there's a lot of, uh... A lot to choose from. That's a, a hard one. Mm. Um... Okay, first of all, we can cut out Post Malone. That's not happening. You think? Dude, no He's a pretty strong contender, way. dude. No fucking way. I don't know. <laughs> I guess, he's gonna be that yo. fucking come... He's, he, he's the comeback kid. <laughs> no. Get that shit out of my face. <laughs> not over This Is America, bro. Not over This Is America. The, that basically... Dude, dude, Childish Gambino, he knows the awards show people. You know what I mean? He's been in the writer's room. He knows how to get the awards. This is him making... He's thinking big. That's exactly why he made this. That's why he made it like a music video and all that shit. He was basically trying to go, hmm, how can... I know I can't make a movie yet. Because, like, I'm not going to get enough love for a movie. But how can I make something so big like a movie... That is going to be bigger than all of hip-hop and all of music and everyone's going to have to talk about it. Boom, the This Is America video. This is the Oscar bait for the Grammys right now. You know it is. And and on top of that, now now that's a song that I think is good, that I think uh, um, is totally Oscar bait, but I think it's done well. I think the one that's actually going to win is your girl uh, uh, and, and Bradley Cooper uh, acting, oh. trying to turn singer Eddie Murphy looking as uh, with their shallow... <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think it's probably gonna go to the middle. What? By by Zed. And, the fucking uh, remake of their other song from the year before. <laughs> well, that, it wasn't their song; it was other people's songs, but they just what? sound the same. Copycat ass motherfucker. <laughs> so I, I'm I'm putting you down for shallow, mm-hmm. and I'm uh. All right, I'm putting a couple dollars in the uh in the pool. <laughs> okay, in the Grammy pool. <laughs> I'm uh I'm. I'm putting it on <clears throat> wax that I am going for the middle. Uh, album of the year. Okay. Uh, this is a bit more... Uh, I'm not as familiar with these picks because I didn't listen to half of these albums, but we listened to... But I, I think I think we don't need to because we've got your winner staring you right in the face. And I think you know who it is. Do we? For album of the year? Mm-hmm. You know who I'm going to say. Uh, Black Panther soundtrack. Fuck that. No. Your girl. Oh. Miss Janelle Monet with dirty motherfucking computer. That's what needs to win. That's wishful thinking, dude. <laughs> that ain't I fucking know. happening. I know. <laughs> dude, I want nothing more. Uh, I know. Than you know what Janelle needs to, to go home. Here's how that fucking gonna... Grammy, but. In a perfect world, in, in the most perfect world that we can have in the system set up the way it is, here's how the night would go. Black Panther would win it, and then Kendrick Lamar would be like, nah, I can't do this. Janelle Monet, come up here. And you know what I'm saying? We get a fucking <laughs> wrestling swerve. Yeah, give this woman her Grammy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I'd love to see Janelle Monet win. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's either going to be drake or the black panther uh album soundtrack I- I- i'm gonna go with the black panther soundtrack i think they're gonna give it to the black panther song of the year it always feels redundant but that's the fucking go-to joke we got all the stars by uh kendrick duckworth kendrick lamar and SZA. boot up we got god's plan in my blood by sean mendez the joke by brandy carlisle the middle again shallow again and this is america 
again. I feel good. I know most of it. Like, I know 99% of these except for the joke. We should listen to the joke. I feel like we owe it to this song. Am I, <laughs> I missing out? Yeah. Yeah, I, I exactly. Like... Let's, let's take a minute. Because I, whenever I see Brandy, uh, Brandy Carlisle, I always read it as Belinda Carlisle, who's from the Go-Go's. Dude, oh, okay, okay. Qu- real quick de- deviation. I, I was just recently watching I Love the 80s, and there was that whole scandal about, like, Ooh, they were recorded on video talking about sex. And I was just thinking about like, wow, man, that is so pedestrian. You mean to tell me that four uh, uh, stars from the mid 80s got caught on videotape uh, in a tape that involves sex and their clothes are on? (laughs) Get this shit out of my face. (laughs) Like, (laughs) all they were doing was talking about like the type of sex they like. And they're a group that I went back to and listened to. And dude, I I mean, I know I'm not going to have a lot of love in the comment section with this, but those first two records are really fucking good. Dude, like, don't sleep. It's yeah. Kind of pop, but it it's like a lot of the songs have like punk rock beats because they were a lot. They were uh, friends with a lot of punk rock bands at the time and ska groups. It's like if the B-52s took itself a little bit more seriously. You know, yeah, but and, yeah. and it was like kids doing it instead of like obviously like older people. You know what I mean? Those first two records definitely worth checking out. I didn't care for their third one, but I do feel like yeah, that was one of those things where like their entire popularity. It's like a fucking uh, Dixie Chicks moments. Their whole popularity was curtailed. Yeah, because I feel like we don't talk about them as much. You know, we really don't, and it's a shame. Like they had an album come out in the two thousands, and like no one fucking remembers it. Like they tried to make a resurgence. I hear the songs in commercials, but I never hear the name The Go-Go's. Watch fucking video of them live. They're all amazing mu- uh, musicians. They all went to a high school where they say that, like, everybody else at the high school played, were, were, like, in a band, and they were, like, the only four that weren't. So they're like, well, shit, we'll fucking make a band. And then they end up being the ones that are, like, the big successes. But at the time when they're forming the group, they were like, uh, who wants to play what? And they're like, I don't know. And they all had to, like, learn their instruments from that point because they didn't know going in and then you fucking watch them live and they're all killing it like they're all way better than some of the other ones you see at the time like holy shit hey we should we should make this a thing we should have a uh, um you know a dusting off of uh some of the some of the covered over um, um great artists that were uh unfairly maligned because of bullshit controversies you know we're fucking going off on a, on a tiny tangent here but i remember we talked about his ass a few weeks ago, fucking Danny Elfman, another group I've been listening to a lot lately, Oingo Boingo. My dude, those first few Oingo Boingo albums are so fucking good. They're so weird, but like they got such a cool energy. It's like dance pop and ska, but like it's you can tell it's from a guy that's like a fucking art nerd. It's fucking cool. It's like when I was a kid and I listened to Devo, I'd go online to like Pandora and it'd be like the recommended groups. And Oingo Boingo would always come up, and I would never give him credence. I would never give him the time of day, but holy shit. I was doing myself a grave disservice. I should have been listening to this shit a long time ago. I mean, to be fair, the name Oingo Boingo does just sort of stink of, like, weird 80s shit that your parents listen to. <laughs> you know? Like, oh yeah, that's the that 80s stuff. <laughs> and even then, that's shorthand for the Mystic Knights of Oingo Boingo, so I mean... <laughs> yeah, that's exactly like the, the, the tail end of the um, the prog rock shit, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking, I got fucking like images of Rush and shit. <laughs> Let's check out this Brandy Carlisle the joke. Oh, this is gonna win. <laughs> This sounds like it could have been from that fucking Lady Gaga soundtrack, for real. <laughs> this is the same type of music, and yeah, this is, this is Grammy bait. If yeah. I've ever heard it. Uh, it's not bad, but yeah, this is definitely not my shit. The song's called The Joke, and yet, like, at a minute, I'm paused at, like, you know, a, a serious black and white face of, like, a woman. <laughs> you know, it's like, the joke is that you thought this was gonna be funny, like... <laughs> <laughs> Is this like that song, I started a joke that got the whole world laughing, but the joke's on me? Like, like that type of, like, oh, yeah, it's subversive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, like, I, I didn't even see the movie, the, um, the, the Lady Gaga Bradley Cooper movie. I didn't even see that. I hear it's okay. I hear kind of mixed reviews from people. Um, I don't know, man. It kind of feels like it's cheating. 
when it comes to the Grammys. Like that, it is like that type of shit that you know the the fucking Grammy panel loves fucking lives for exactly I, i'm looking at npr right now brandy carlisle's the joke will launch you into the emotional yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> all right we know what this is yeah this gonna win <laughs> all the name of her album is by the way i forgive you <laughs> oh this is just what the grammys eat up right oh this is y- your girl look out adele <laughs> Oh, she coming for that number one spot? (laughs) This is Adele without charisma and personality. Right, right. (laughs) Um, man, I don't want to say that's going to be it, but it might be it. (laughs) But I've never heard that song. Like, Where the fuck am I supposed to hear that? That doesn't get played on the radio. I just looked. It only has a million views, and it's been out since February. Whenever something that, you know, is getting nominated for something like that, and you find it has, like, so little views... I always immediately go like, wait a minute, really? What's going on here? Is this the pity one, or is this the, we're going to make this one win so that we look like we're the cool guys one? You know what I mean? I'm putting my money on Kendrick and SZA on this one. Uh, All the stars. I'm going to put my money on the joke. I, I, I can hear it. It sounds like they made this song because Shallow was too controversial, and they're like, all right, we got we to gotta tone that down. <laughs> You know, but what I, I want to give it to This Is America, but you know. Yeah, I I think it's I think it's too spicy. Too yeah. spicy for that panel. Then we got this category of fresh-faced, bushy-tailed youngins, the uh, best new artist category, which, again, I'm only familiar with about half these folks. We got uh, Chloe X, is that Haley or Hale? We got Luke Combs, the, uh, the country star. We got the subject of what was like the most scathing album review that to the point where it was a meme Greta Van Fleet well okay so what was that about why would why was they so cold-blooded what happened uh the whole thing is that they pretty much jacked the their entire sound from uh Led Zeppelin like to the point where it was like cosplaying as them like yeah like it like it didn't even feel like a tribute it was just like they were just color by numbers tracing their mm. fucking thing and not even really putting their own individual spin on it. You call it between the lines. You are a tracer. <laughs> <laughs> you draw between the lines. You are a tracer. What's a Nubian? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> Her? I don't know who that is. H E R? Uh, Dua Lipa, who I fuck with. Yeah, I fucking like her album. I, you know you know how people said in the 80s there was a sophista pop or whatever? Oh, yeah. I, I mm-hmm. feel like this is kind of like the new version of that. You know, like, let's let's talk about having, you know, responsibility for your love life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got uh, Margot Price. I'm, I'm not sure who that is. The year's mandatory, <laughs> obligatory, not new artist, new yeah. artist in BB Rexa. Come on. How are we defining this? Because I'm pretty sure in 20... Like, you, she had... A, she literally had a hit song with... um, Oh, uh, who was it? Was it the I Don't Care? Was that Charlie XCX? Am I confusing those two? Uh, that was yeah, Demi am, Lovato. Uh, oh, De- BB Rexa had the song with uh, G-Eazy. Yeah. I did me about to but I... Yeah, that one. And, and most recently, that fucking unescapable uh, Florida Georgia line ass, country ass crossover. Oh, nah, you can keep that. I ain't even looking for that. I ain't checking for that. Then we got. Uh, is it Georgia? Ah, uh, okay. Georgia oh, Smith. Is she Scandinavian or something? Who is this person? <laughs> now I'm curious. I thought maybe this was a, a like the the Mexican Will Smith uh, uh you know son that we didn't know about you know we we have the BB Rexa who's not new and then we have some of these people that are so new I've literally never heard like their I'm names pretty sure they ever. were just born like last year like, <laughs> <laughs> um I, I'm gonna put my money here on BB Rexa <laughs> hmm. do you, do you think <laughs> yeah yeah. You, you, do you really think maybe they're giving it to the person that everyone knows and and uh, not going to throw a bone to all these people that literally you, you either don't know 
or one of them was literally trashed by all the critics last year. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm just going to think that they're going to look at the accomplishments and they're going to look at the fucking name uh, BB Rexa has made for herself and just give it to her and not even really think too much about it. That or Georgia Smith, just because, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, th- Throw me down for that one. I just want to see if that'll happen. Best pop solo performance. What? Now, my question is, why Havana live? That's what I was wondering, too. Like, is that the one that fucking gets radio play? I don't think so. The one I hear is the one with Young Thug, so why is his name not on here as well? Oh. Oh. Is that the fucking Grammys? Pulling mm. the goddamn Grammys too white. Oh, but I do, do see the uh, hip-hop represented in, in another name. Uh, that uh, you're about to go down. <laughs> oh, we got dude, back. What if he sweeps it? <laughs> oh, dude, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But uh, we're talking then none other than... Goddamn Post Malone. I can't stand his ass. I fucking hate every song I hear of his. Um, we got uh, Joanne by Lady Gaga. Uh, God is a Woman by Ariana Grande, like you said, Havana, Live by uh, Camila Cabello, and Colors by Beck. I, I The one I hadn't heard at all. I feel like that's the one that's going to win, because that just seems to be what he does. Don't I like he was listening to that album that uh, 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 Beck won for when Kanye West interrupted his ass? Don't I like anyone was listening to it? And this isn't me just talking, wishful thinking. I honestly think Ariana's going to grab that one. Yeah, even though, like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't like that song that much. Oh, you don't? Yeah. I oh, don't know man. What, and I feel like I should, like, all these latest singles, like, I feel like I should be rocking with, but I'm kind of not. Man, I love that album from top to bottom. That's a surprise. I feel so bad about that because it's like, I was thinking about, like, Thank You Next. I was like, no, nah, I don't really feel that one either. Look, No Tears Left to Cry, though. I also kind of didn't like where it went. Like, I like where it started, and then it was just like, wait, you're just doing the, oh, you're just doing, like, the dance? The, okay, we weren't going anywhere more epic with this, oh. And I remember hearing about, like, God is a Woman, like, oh, snap, this is gonna be, like, this epic, this is gonna be her magnum opus, I mean, it's called fucking God is a Woman. And it was just like, oh, it's just about sex. And, like, and it wasn't in a way that made it, like, really explosive, and, and like, this is a definitive song of the year about sex. It was just like, it's a sex song, you know. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just wasn't... And I feel so bad because, like, I'm totally in Ariana's corner. I'm not the type of dude who's hating. If she's not winning for the other things, I think this is where Lady Gaga's gonna win. But I think... Like, I mean, this is where I would want her to win. You know what I'm saying? Like, if she can't get the other things, she's gotta at least get this. Because Joanne was a dope fucking song. That's um, true. Yeah. But I think it's gonna go to Beck just because. Just because it's what he does. If they wanted to upset things and give it to the younger person... I think it should be Ariana Grande just because she has been making her ways. You know what I mean? Like she's been like, she's, she's earned her stripes. You know what I mean? So like, even if it's a joint that I I personally don't like as much as like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna front and act like, you know, that's not earned. But the the, Camila Cabela, I don't know. I feel like, eh, Havana would not be as big without Young Thug. Now, if you'd like, uh, we can scroll on down to category 22. (laughs) Best rap performance. Mm. Be careful by Cardi B. Odd choice, I, I, I would say. Um, nice for what by Drake. King's dead. I'll be fucking damned. <laughs> oh, the fucking second half of that song, dude, is fucking fire, but I know, it but is not worth yeah. what you gotta sit through to get <laughs> to it. And then, you know, people shitting on Future, and I was listening back to J-Rock, I'm like, wait a minute, no, J-Rock can get this heat too? What the fuck was that verse? <laughs> yeah, everyone's fucking ignoring him because he's fucking on the label, but no, 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 he wasn't shit on that song. When that song first came out, somebody made the meme of the uh, slow, the camera slowly closing in on J-Rock's face and him just going, I gotta go get it, 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 I gotta go get it. Go get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Yeah, it's like, what is, what is he doing? Like, and the thing is, like, the song starts off with Kendrick, and it's like, it just 
cut like it starts off with him doing the uh, with uh, uh, a chorus that sounds like it's a verse you know what i mean like if you're not paying yeah. attention and so you're thinking he's rapping it, and then it cuts straight to j-rock doing his verse and you're just like wait but oh no when oh. i was here for kendrick i thought this was gonna be a good song what's happening <laughs> but then then we got our boy anderson pack with bubbling mm. bubbling I, i'm kind of flimsy on how much i'd call that a rap song but okay like it's a hype song uh, well isn't nice for what a fucking hype song <laughs> but he does rap in it like bubbling he's singing and it's like you could say it's rapping but you're not really trying to be like ooh, let's hear the lyrical mastery of anderson punk he's not really that guy like even it, like my thing about him is it's like he's not that great lyrically but you absolutely know that's not what you're here for here because his voice is amazing and his fucking energy is insane and his instrumentation is out of this world. You know what I mean? Uh, and then we got the controversial sicko mode. Travis Scott, Drake, Big Hawk, and Swally, your boy, Swally. <laughs> Wait, wh- why is this one controversial? Everyone seems torn on whether or not sicko mode is good or trash. I've heard, like, it's 50-50 across the board. Probably because it's literally three different songs. <laughs> it's like there's yeah. people who it's like there's people who like two thirds of it, people who like one third of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> people can't decide. <laughs> this is a tough one. Honestly. Yeah. Okay. Give give me your give me your prediction. I think I think Drake's gonna get it. Mm, you wait. Do you think this is gonna be Drake's year? No. No. You, th- you think the, the, the that was too much of a knockdown? You know, he could get up, but you're not you're not sweeping it. We're not going to let you sweep it. Uh, he's not like the like the things he does, he's not as controversial in that regard. Like a lot of the things he does is kind of avoidable. Like he leaves that shit out of his music for the most part. Yeah. Like it's not like this is America where that song is like 100% political. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, he has fucking he has diss tracks or whatever, but those aren't the songs that are getting nominated for the Grammy. It's yeah, yeah, goddamn. Yeah song for the club um yeah i don't think cardi is gonna walk away with anything i think politics has fucked her up this year if if she would have kept her head down i think maybe that could have worked but i think i think she's been fucking sabotaged and because of that people are kind of like upper upper people are kind of just like you know i'm not saying i hate her but nah, i'm just not talking about her you know what i mean i'm not going to go ahead and 100% blame it on politics and kind of absolve her of blame i think she's worth getting a few fingers pointed at her herself but I, I, i'm saying like i'm just saying in general the way this situation okay. plays out they're going to go with a safer bet than cardi but if we were to go purely on Oh, oh wait! Did you did you give your prediction yet? Yeah, Drake you said. Yeah, Drake. But who would you want to win? I would want Kendrick to get one, even though it's not that great of a song. But his verse, <laughs> right, is right. fucking solid. Right. It, he, he just needs to be the only one that goes up on stage. How about that? Like, yeah. Rock and Future couldn't make it. They're tied up in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're in fucking Kendrick's trunk. <laughs> no, <I'm playing. laughs> but um, who I hmm. Who I think, if if it weren't for the controversy and anything like that, I think they would give it to Cardi B. Mm. Because that is a very safe song. And it actually is not that bad of a song. And the music video is fucking incredible. I fuck with a lot of songs off that album. It's just hard for me to really support her for a lot of reasons. But that is a good, uh, a good single. I was a fan of that one. Uh, do you think she's going to get it, though? What uh? What I think, I I think Drake is gonna win, like you said, you know. Now that I think about it, uh, but who I think should totally get it is Travis Scott. I I got because and yeah. and, I, and I was torn because it's like, be careful has the emotionality that I think Grammy people will go for, but I think Sicko Mode has more of the creativity. Uh, then we got best rap slash sung performance. That sounds uh, like so bubbling to me. Some of the singers in there too. <laughs> And this is purely so you can have Black and J. Cole in there. You got mm-hmm. Like I Do, Christina Aguilera featuring Gold Link. I checked that song out. Yo, that song actually is, like, really fucking good. Like, it surprised the shit out of me. Like, in the way that it's, like, it's not just like, oh, hey, that's pretty good for a pop song by Christina Aguilera. No, it's like, she sounds like a mature woman 
who's like coming to this young dude and is like, yo, you ain't got, you ain't got flash money on you. You ain't got flash money on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know my shit. I know how to do this shit. And it was like, it was like fully taking charge of that in a way that didn't feel exploitative. It felt like real. You know what I mean? It wasn't like that fucking MILFs song. Yeah. You know that, like that just <laughs> felt silly and played up. This felt like, no, like I, I feel like I'm listening in on a conversation that I probably shouldn't be listening to. Like, <laughs> like they about to go to the back room right now. Like that's how awesome the energy was. I really enjoyed that one. I mean, I, I know she's got fucking talent. I know that I'm not shortchanging her at all. But I remember seeing a lot of people weren't exactly pleased with the new album. I think because it was too like rap heavy for like fans of hers were expecting goddamn late '90s genie in a bottle bullshit, but. They weren't expecting grown ass woman Christina to be coming through. And that's the thing. When I heard the song, it sounded so much like, yeah, I was expecting like, oh, this is going to be, you know, Britney Spears, you know, like it's uh, a pop yeah. song, but she's going to have Will I Am on there or some shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like this actually felt like an experience listening to it. I was like, oh, okay. I can respect hmm. what you're doing here. Then we got Pretty Little Fears by Black and J. Cole. This is America, Childish Gambino. All the stars, Kendrick Lamar and SZA, and rock star Post Malone featuring 21 Savage. Ya yeah, boy. <laughs> mm, yes, my boy and yours, Post Malone. <laughs> uh, hmm. I think this is going to go to Kendrick. Because th- th- there needs to be that. Th- they have to have uh, Disney's Grammy Award winning uh, lead single, All the Stars. Oh yeah, that has to happen. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think of it that way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's <laughs> going to happen. So if, if they go for the safe bet, it's all the stars. If they're feeling spicy this year, if they want to switch it up, if they want to have the people talking, they're going to go with This Is America. Let's see. The next one is just best rap song. So here we got God's Plan, King's Dead again. Why? Why do they keep going back to that one? Um, there were better songs you? on that album. <laughs> Yeah, for real. And Lucky You, Eminem featuring Joyner Lucas? No, no. That was what a bone. What the fuck? They were throwing that one a bone. Come on now. You all know the song we're talking about. You all know the yes. song we're talking about. This year. Don't act like it was this one. Uh, then we got Sicko Mode again. And then we got the fucking Come From Behind Kid, Win, <laughs> by Yo. J-Rock. <laughs> I actually like that song. <laughs> Win. Win, 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 win. Fuck everything else. Win, 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 win. <laughs> That's the motivation That was an album we didn't talk about, but I listened to that album. It, it was fun. I like that album. <laughs> um, hmm. Best rap song, A. Eh? Best rap song, hmm. I don't think any of these are the best fucking rap song of the year. Oh, <laughs> That's the big not goddamn even problem. remotely close. Yeah, like, these aren't even fucking content. Like, you got the worst of Kendrick. Like, what the fuck are you even doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> you got the worst Kendrick song. What the fuck is Ooh. going on? You should have my face. <laughs> go back to start. I think this one is going to go to Drake. This one for sure is going to Drake. Uh, for God's plan. I don't even think there's, like, a... Like, the other ones, I don't even think these guys are really contenders. And uh, wrapping up the rap category, best rap album for albums containing at least 51% playing time of new rap recordings. Invasion of Privacy, Cardi B. Swimming by Mac Miller, which I hate to say it, but I think they only put it in there to make the news. Yeah, I I, I think they're going to give it to him, but that would look bad. But it would also, like, it's one of those, like, it's posthumous. You got to give it to him. But then it's just like, ooh, but we're giving it to the white guy in the black category. <laughs> but in I think, a fucking I, rap album that literally, let's be honest, nobody was talking about that. I feel like I did not hear nearly as much. Especially, no. especially compared to, like, not even Cardi B, Astro World. We got Daytona by Pusha T and Victory Lap by Nipsey Hussle. On second thought, I think people would respect it if they give it to Mac Miller. You know, because when he did die, you saw a lot of outpouring of support, and no one made it racial or anything like that. People were just like, yo, actually, he was the homie. You know what I mean? You know what? I've changed my mind. I said it earlier. I'm changing my mind. I think Cardi's getting this one. 
So we've got our predictions in line. Uh, I'll make sure to post these on Twitter so y'all can see what we had uh, we had said. And you can oh, you keep tabs on us. Oh. <laughs> and then uh, the week after it airs, we can go back and see exactly how right and or wrong uh, we were. I like that. But, but for this week on the show, we're back to two Patreon requested album reviews and I think because we're going in the order of which is the oldest, which is the newest, we should probably start with your uh, request, which was, uh, get em, granddad, <laughs> the 1032 <laughs> LP. I had to check to make sure the person who was requesting it wasn't the person themselves. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, while I was listening to it, I was tempted to send you an email be like hey <laughs> is this not granddad are you sure <laughs> i love the idea of you just going hey <laughs> <laughs> look if you were fooled look, i understand <laughs> it's funny if we fucking had like <laughs> matching merch my shirt would say hey and yours would say look yeah <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, let's get on that. <laughs> hey, <laughs> look. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Silver Oso uh, requested this one. Thank you so much for your request. If there's an album that you would like to request us to review on the podcast, head on over to either of our Patreons, patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse uh, for details. So right now with this record from uh, 2010, um, I'm just going to go ahead and say I've never heard of uh, Granddad Wooly. Uh, maybe in the minority in that? Who knows? I doubt it. I have no idea who the fuck this person is. So this was a very interesting listen. Uh, my interest in it uh, varied, um, like a tiny sea boat in a fucking <laughs> tropical storm. <laughs> I was thrown around a lot. Um... I'm going to go ahead and say, though, way more leaning to the not feeling it than feeling it side. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, you, I'm with you. <laughs> we could just come out and say that. I think we're both in agreement on that term. You know, normally we go with, uh, if it's an album we're really feeling, we go with the songs that uh, we weren't feeling as much. Lil, let me start with the songs I thought weren't so bad. Oh, okay. The songs I thought were the uh, were the cream of the crop. The songs that were, uh, if I were to recommend anyone listen to these songs, it would probably be these. And that's even kind of speaking hypothetically because I don't think I would recommend anyone listen to this. But if they were, uh, Deliver the Quotes uh, was catchier uh, than I'm Granddad anyway. And the... Uh, Tibby tibby time to rap was kind of fun. <laughs> got, <laughs> and got stuck in my head. Time to rap. <laughs> tibby tibby time to rap. <laughs> I couldn't help but smile at that. He's called Granddad Willie, and he doesn't sound old for any of this album except for like three songs. Uh, here, here's another one I thought uh, kind of stood out. Uh, Music Man's Hustle. Okay. The uh, autobiographical type track, which there are plenty of. But I thought it was the best of those. Um, and Where Do I Belong? Which is the second to last track was the song I gave the highest uh, rating to. I thought it was a pretty solid cut, honestly. Uh, at least compared to the rest of the album. Uh, it had a simple repeating beat, which is not unusual for this album. But I thought it was alright. The rest of it, though, uh, you can keep it. <laughs> that's, that's me being very polite you, man, you can keep it man <laughs> look the first note I have written down is this is MC Hammer quality rap <laughs> like man okay so he starts off he sounds like <laughs> he sounds like he's doing this South Park impression of the old guy from Pet Cemetery. You know, you don't want to go along that ride. That ride up there is where Granddad so and so is from. What what I got from it was like he was doing a silly kung fu, like oh voice. no! I thought yeah, I thought he was doing like you know the old man warning you not to go up the road because ah uh, okay. Then you'll be blindsided by the. I don't even know what like was there a plot like what the fuck is going on like. 
this album no. jumps all over the place. Like at one point, they're from the future. I'm like, huh? Was that an? How did that happen? I, you can't just that throw wasn't time established into this. at all. You can't just throw time travel into this. And so, to give you an example, I'm just gonna throw you some of his lyrics. Right. I got this beat that you can ride with, most deaf vibe with, and if you like it, you can bring a couple of psychics. Like, bring a couple of psychics to listen to the song? What the fuck? Is, huh? And then he says, hip-hop has returned, and I'm the steerer. Which... <laughs> Look. <laughs> Sorry, you Rappers up. need to stop <laughs> with the hip-hop has returned bullshit in the first place. <laughs> Fucking... Unless you're bringing something really new and revolutionary. But even then, why, why would you say that? Like, Black Eyed Peas were saying that shit. Like, man, hip-hop is finally back with this shit. Like, f- it, it never went away. But, but that's not the line. That's not the whole line. Because that's just a setup. It's just such a bad, like, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> it was like, so no bad, I word. didn't even notice he said he was the steerer. <laughs> but, but the way he says it was... The steerer. So, like, you know, when you eat an ER turns into an A. So the way he says it is, hip-hop has returned, and I'm the steerer. Uh, back on one of my tracks that you can really hear her. Ooh. And, like, he p- specifically pronounces the her. <laughs> so it's like, hip-hop has returned, and I'm the steerer. Back one of my tracks so you can really hear her. And I'm just like, <laughs> you think that sounds good? I mean, do you think it sounds good? Like, just let me know if it sounds good, because if that sounds good to you, like, I'll just fucking... I guess we just don't have a... We don't have any common ground here. If that doesn't sound whack to you, what the fuck ever. Then you got Deliver the Quotes. Mm. Oh, before we get to Deliver the Quotes, can I just point out how bad the interjections at the end of the lines in Ah! I Am the Granddad were? (laughs) Like, he would repeat the last word of the line, but he would just be like... He'd have this weird, like, questioning inflection on it, and it would always sound bad. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, deliver the quote says, It's time to rap, and you can keep your stamps. Don't need the envelope, because I deliver the quotes. <laughs> oh, that was so oh. bad. All that build up. This is the chorus, by the way. This is the fucking... <laughs> you're it's hearing this a lot it's timmy timmy time to rap <laughs> <laughs> like oh oh you need to hear this more than once <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and then the come up which was just just this boring it's just the story of his life but it's not told in any way interesting when you asked earlier if there was a plot there isn't a plot but what you get is they're trying to make it sound like Granddad Wooly is just a phenomenal rapper who everyone's heard of, and boy oh boy, you just gotta see how he got to where he is now, because you gotta see him grow as an artist, because it's already well established that he's phenomenal. That's already agreed upon by everybody, but, you know, it wasn't always this great. We gotta talk about how he fucking got to where he's at, and it's like, I don't know who this guy is. You can't fucking do that. You can't fucking tell me a boring-ass story about a rapper I don't care about in the first place. That's not how that works. So you got this old this old guy who I swear was supposed to be like a kung fu master type character because it sounded like he was doing a bad Asian impression. Yeah, the voices that they're doing aren't that good. Like, the impressions are horrible. <laughs> they're so half-assed. Oh, Grandad. Like, he was doing that shit. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, I didn't think it was, like, an old man at the road. I thought he was doing, like, Kung Fu Master Kill Bill bullshit. That just shows Not how Kill bad Bill the, rapper, the impression was. But yeah. Kill Bill the movie. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, that shit has got to go. I skipped over that shit every time it popped up. Like, if it was at the end of a song, and there was a minute left, and they started that shit, I was like, I'm good. I don't need this. I don't need to hear any of this shit. Um, but finally, he does mix it up a little bit with... Welcome to the Horror Show, a song that's not about him for once. You know, he's trying. <laughs> you know, he's a, I feel like the Mr. Meeseeks, ooh, he's trying! Because this song's about, you know, uh, oh, four different horror movie villains. Ooh, it's so s- scary. <laughs> he really digs deep with the references, too, doesn't he? Oh, all, oh he, he gives you He doesn't chucky. pick mm. the four most well-known horror movie villains. <laughs> <Yeah>. Christ. <laughs> 
And, and s- since it has to be about four different ones, he doesn't really get that much time to go into detail of them. So it's more just like, why are you telling me about these people? I know who they are. Like, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, you're like, not telling me any info I didn't know about Jason Voorhees already. Yeah, it's like, why does it matter that you're making this song? He keeps a stack of dead bodies piled up in his home next to the light lit candles in his mom's severed dome. Though he never says a word, you should always take heed... <laughs> <laughs> that that line just no, he never says a word you should always th- I think that was like an ending line and that's why I wrote that down because it was just like something 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 but intended a deed though he never says a word you should always take heed and it's just like who is who is aligned with take heed because you never know who's next to go because when you travel down this road you get in at the rope and then he laughs at his own joke and I don't know what was supposed to be funny <laughs> Another song is kind of an anthology of sorts because it's a it's a cipher kind of spelt weird. Um, you got four rappers. You got Granddad Wooly. You got Mr. Anthem, Evolve, and Fetu the MC. <laughs> I can swear it was Fetus, <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, are they going for that? Are they going for that type of joke?" <laughs> I uh, this was. This was a ride, because <laughs> Granddad does okay. And this is, like, the first time he uses the old guy voice. Like, it's the first track, and then track five. Anthem wasn't really anything special. Evolve no. had a decent flow, making me wish more of the album was him instead of Granddad. But then, mm. MC's verse... Yo... Sounds like it was recorded on a shitty microphone? Exactly. What the fuck was that? But it was the best one, that's the thing. What? No, it wasn't. (laughs) Yes, it was. That was sloppy as shit. And and it was so funny because it's like right after, you know, as I'm listening to it, it's like, wait a minute. Is this badly recorded or are they just doing something? And then when Granddad comes back in, you're like, oh, yeah, that was badly recorded. Oh. (laughs) Oh, Oh, that was really badly recorded. Like, was he in prison? Like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's doing the fucking, uh... The shine, the, the, you know. He's doing the Bobby Shimerda. I'm yeah. gonna fucking call in and record a verse for your album from jail. Um, no, like, it might have started out okay, but by the end of it, it was so rushed. <laughs> yeah, you're right, like, you're right. he didn't know what the beat was, and he was just doing it from memory. It sounded so fucking bad. No, it, it started off definitely with some cool ideas. He was like, let's see if I can get as deep and unique as these three on the beat. Man, you fuckers only left pieces to eat. So out of discouragement, I reversed the beat, spun it backwards, and came back and ate it like I was the first to spit. I was like, okay, that was actually kind of... Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> you know. See, here's the thing. Without the lyrics being on genius it was kind of hard to follow yeah the, i had to go back and write shit down i was like oh god damn Ugh, it. so it's, annoying it's going back to the old days <laughs> yeah the analog yeah. days <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah um the guy who came before him evolve i had no idea if i like liked his verse or not he was trying to be on some ghost face killer shit you know i thought it was all right because uh, 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 i quote he goes the word nerd, say maneuver, in a rhyme, you dumb humans. Sound clash, bum rush, feel the ripple effect. Futuristic words, infinite slang, uh, 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 wreck, live wire, affect the universe. Unravel the tangible, siphle circles, happy hour, spit bars for days, drunk off terminology. That was a word salad. I don't know what the fuck I just said. Like, I had to try to focus to make sure I was saying the words in the right order. Because I was like, what the fuck am I saying? <laughs> Drunk off of terminology? What the fuck? You know you don't know what that means. Anything is better. You're right. Than the next one. <laughs> You're right. I knew what you was about to say. I gave that one a straight up zero and skipped after like 20 seconds. <laughs> that was the one with the, oh, oh my God, wait, what was that? Uh, and you know what I hate? Whack rap stallions who use fake grades to try to polish their mistakes. What? That's exactly the fucking way I felt. I was like, fake grade? What? The fucking rappers? Like, oh, this didn't get a four out of five. I I, I put a little uh, marker over it. It got a five out of five. C record label? I got a good <laughs> review. The fuck are you talking? No one gives a shit. What are you saying? <laughs> when this fucking song started out with the old man voice being like, oh, turn it up in the hearing aid. What? I was like, nope. <laughs> 
I don't need and this. The thing is, that was the only, that was one of the that was one of the better bars. <laughs> he says, oh, like, wow. I'm like, uh oh, he says, okay. my style is like my hearing aid because you know it's deaf. I'm like, well, the ear would be deaf. all right. <laughs> <laughs> the hearing aid ain't doing its job then, I, I guess. <laughs> Interesting idea for wise men. Yeah, but it's like um. It's like the, remember that album we did where it was like a whole concept album, you know, with a whole bunch of rappers coming in and shit. Um, I forgot who it was. Prince Paul! <laughs> oh! uh, shout out to him <laughs> again. Shout, shout out to that uh, whole crew again, because uh, from the intro. Yeah. So back to the woods again. All right. But uh, what, what, what were we talking about? Wise Men, the Reservoir Dogs wannabe track. Oh, yeah. How that song was, like, that song sounds like... The, remember the first couple of tracks where they were trying to do the rapping and talking with the conversation? It sounds super fucking oh, sloppy. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly that, but with even less, like, effort put into it. You could tell that we're going for something, and it's trying to tell a story, but, like, in the middle of all this other stuff... Like, I'm so like, confused by this point. Yeah. I, yeah. And it's like, then, wait, there like, are mafia men? When do, where did that come from? Yeah, like, it felt like that was just supposed to be, like, a one-off... Doesn't really have anything to do with the rest of it, but eh, all right. At least it was trying to do something different, I guess. Uh, the Ascended Pen Project. Oh my. Uh, oh my. Oh dearie, dearie, dear. <laughs> more unwarranted brag shit. Fucking undeserved <laughs> braggadocio. Bro, if I may quote. <laughs> you may. Give me one reason. Rap niggas is hatin', but I tell them all, don't have a cow like a vegan. Did you say don't have a cow to the haters? Did you say that in the year of our Lord 2010? <laughs> Did you say that? Word? That was dated 10 years ago. <laughs> right? Like, God, did that put damn. the haters in their place? When you said don't oh. have a cow. Oh, snap. He used a fucking dated Simpsons reference. Oh, I sure know my way. I, I sure am going to mind my P's and Q's around him. He sure is wielding that ascended pen. <laughs> Ooh, boy. So here's my fucking thing. I, I listened to this album through the first time, and then the second time, you know, where I start going through the lyrics. And Ooh, I couldn't imagine doing this a second time. I mean, I really had a point where I was like, okay, if these songs don't get any better, I'm not going to bother trying to, like... <laughs> Fuck <laughs> like, this. They, I, I, this was one of those ones, man. This is one of those ones where I went back the second time. I was like, and, and I even tried, like, I, I give it the first five tracks, you know, and if I'm not feeling it, I just, I just cut it off. But like, I tried to give it one more and it was like, it was slightly better. And then the one right after that one was bad again. And I was like, nah. The aforementioned Music Man's Hustle. Um, this to me was one of the best or closest attempts to a complete song. You got, uh, I really liked the beat on that one. It actually sounded like a fucking professional ass beat. Uh, you had a guest vocalist who, I liked his voice, but the lyrics were kind of whack, so it didn't really matter. It was like, eh, it was almost there. Because he can't fucking help himself, the song has to end with a shitty character voice. Leading into what's supposed to be an interlude, but it's too long to be an interlude. It's basically its, its own song. Yeah. I-E-L featuring who I assume is another character, Cadbury Greenwald, this, like, professor of sorts. Okay, I didn't hate this one, right? Uh, I didn't love it. I, it, it. Like, it was one of those, this is a really interesting idea, I still don't want to hear this song again. You know what I mean? That, like <laughs> That could have been way shorter for what they were going for. The idea... Either done by a better rapper or done maybe in a smaller dose because every time it was like step whatever and it, but by the time it got to like step five I was like oh my god we're still going yeah it, no you're you're totally right even though it's only two minutes <laughs> I it still, feels like, like so like, much <laughs> longer yeah like this could have ended a lot sooner I like the sample you know I liked how they did that but it yeah. still felt weirdly mixed. Like, it, it really felt like, I should like this. I should at least like what's happening in the sample. But, it like, again, it like, I still just don't want to listen to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it had a, uh, like, a classical music sample that was looped. Um, which, again, would work if it was used better. Um, I like the idea, though. Um, I just like how it got to the final step. was like, step seven. 
And this guy that's supposed to be like, I'm gonna tell you what it takes to be a real MC, rhymes seven with heaven and eleven. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, you fucking hack. Stop it. I want to feel bad that I'm dumping on this guy who's obviously an independent dude, right? Yeah. But you said don't have a cow. (laughs) Like, come on. I'm about, so. I'm about to blame your shit. <laughs> <laughs> the gloves are off after that shit. <laughs> like, you, you ass should have known how to say that shit. <laughs> um, I give it a two. I give it a one. But can I just say? Who? Can I just say? Go ahead and say it. Listening to Granddad Wooly was worth it just to listen to to fucking Angel Hayes. Angel Hayes, back to the woods, requested Devin Balicki? <laughs> you need to quit. Yo, you better get that right. <laughs> Balicki? Oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna no. say Balicki. Oh god, please don't let that be his name. Oh god, no. Devin, so with, all, with, with all due respect, thank you for your Patreon <laughs> pledge. We're, we're not gonna try to clown on you. Oh, for something you can't fucking help. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm a dick. I wasn't expecting it. <laughs> a fucking album from uh, 2015. Pansexual, a gender rapper, Angel Hayes. This is fucking solid, my dude. Wow. Fucking great beats. So much emotion and... I'm the the star of this album. The imagery, like the songwriting. Oh yes! Wow! Yes, poetry, man. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say, starting with D Day was probably the one mistake I'd say they made here. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with you. First three tracks I kind of thought were trash. Wow! No! Wow, I thought Impossible and On Fire were great. Oh, man. Some of these lyrics, man, they just felt a little, like, they were just trying a little too hard to be, like, hardcore. And it was just, like, it just came off. Like, like this one lyric is like, Fuck, boy, I'm as wild as a buck in the rain. Wild as a fox who be running with rabies. Wild as that pedo that's scoping your block out for a month because he's planning to eat all your babies. And I was like, uh, I don't think pedophiles eat babies i think it was on the on the line of like we're talking about animals we're gonna equ- equate them to animals and again th- th- this might explain something angel hayes grew up on seven mile the eminem influence might be pretty ah pro- uh, i see what you're trying to say <laughs> and see the thing is yeah <laughs> it's, it's not as prevalent as i would have thought because i i read that going in i read like the the genius annotations Maybe impossible. Maybe one of the few songs that I might have picked up that influence on, but it doesn't really come up a lot. I mean, the first one was more personal, but it just kind of—I felt like it didn't go into a d- enough detail for it to really hit as hard as an introduction. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the, like the flow I thought was the biggest takeaway, but the lyrics weren't on par, and the beat wasn't really as good as it's going to get. And there wasn't a lot of personality on display, especially on an album that has so much personality that I felt like it was just, this is the song that's going to establish the connection that Angel Hayes has to Detroit. Although that doesn't come up a lot, The Woods comes up um, on just about every track. And there's a reason for that. But I like that the album makes you wait for that. If you didn't know going into the album... Which I did about not. <laughs> Angel Hayes' like background and story, then getting to that last track is like, oh shit. Man. Wow, okay. But we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that. So Like I said, the first couple of tracks, I I, I like I wanna get this out of the way. When I f- was first like going through and like rating lyric for lyric, I got three tracks in and I was like, oh no. Cause I didn't like any of the first three songs, I rated them all like ones, twos, and threes. And I was just like, oh man, is this a case of like, 
well, because they were like, they sounded like they were super rapping. That's what made it sound like, you know what I mean? It's like, because the way it sounded was so cool that I kind of didn't pay attention to what they're actually saying. And then as soon as I pay attention to them, it's like, you know, that happens a lot, you know, where it's just like, it sounded really cool, but oh, wait a minute. It's a whole bunch of pop and circus. Buster Rhymes, you get that a lot where it's just like, you know, I'm begging on the East and then I'm begging on the West and then I'm like, always give me more <laughs> and I will never give you less. I was like, you didn't say anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I gave Impossible and On Fire both fours. I was really impressed by those tracks. I thought, and it might have been because the the beats were fucking dope, and they slapped really fucking hard, and... I wasn't feeling the beats, dang. So even the fucking beat and transition into the chorus on On Fire, n- not feeling that one either oh uh, like i hated the fact that like I, I looked well i had to look back what the title of the song was i was like oh yeah it's called on fire why doesn't this song feel like it's on fire like oh, man <laughs> i thought that absolutely was man how you throw dirt on a seed and not expect it to grow and at first i was like oh yeah it's kind of dope and then she does like oh my god i was like all right well you just ruined it by like overblowing your reaction you know? Oh no, I like I, I loved the oh my god. <laughs> I thought that was I, cool. It just, it just felt like like I was feeling the line and it was just like, alright, it wasn't that fucking funny. <laughs> 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 and then um I don't want to live a life on fire and nothing to show for it. If suffering makes a god, then let me know more of it. And that line kinda got me confused because I was like, wait, who said suffering makes someone into a god? is that a is that common wisdom? Did I not know about that? I think that might lead into that that's one of the themes that comes up a lot yeah. is the being gods. And again, I don't know how that all falls in, but I think that was just kind of part of that. Here's why I'm bringing this up. So this is the moment where I was like, all right, I'm just getting confused. So first I was bored. Now I'm confused. And what usually comes next is anger. Because <laughs> 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 it's just like, I don't know what's happening. Okay, seriously, what's happening? I hate that this is happening. <laughs> Like, you know, that's the, that's the natural progression. Then the wolves came in. <laughs> Look, I was going to say, if we weren't on the same page by the wolves, yeah. then I don't know what to tell you. Oh, uh, this is a fucking bot for the ages. Man. This is a part where the wolves comes in. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, like... Woo. I think there's a good bit of energy on the first few tracks, but not anywhere near this level. When this, thir- like, I'm telling you right now, the first few tracks, and, and it's not that I thought it was, like, horrible or shitty. It was just like, man, this just feels like another one of those, like, hey, they're really talented, but they're not really doing a lot with it. They're just kind of, like, rapping, rapping, and it's not really going anywhere. There's no real cool concepts or anything like that. You know, it's like, it sounded like you were the creative type of person. You weren't gonna, oh, okay, you know, so it's kind of like, Man, is it going to be one of these reviews? I don't want this. I don't want to do this. You know? Yeah, and then, I, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and then when the wolves came in, I literally had the reaction of like, you know, so I'm feeling like, man, I don't know what's happening. I'm confused. And then I hear the wolves and I just go like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we go in there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, he, he. I was oh, all right, all right, for real. Let's go, let's go. And then every track <laughs> after that was fucking incredible. Moonrise. I just looked at the track list, and Moonrise Kingdom is right after. Oh my god. <laughs> the wolves into Moonrise Kingdom. Yeah, that I will say it is weird because the first two tracks, the album does take a while to get going theme wise, right? Which you would kind of expect it to be over the whole album, but yeah, it's not until the wolves. And even that doesn't really fit into the overall narrative. It just kind of is an introduction to the theme of we're going to be fucking talking about wildlife a lot. We're going back to the woods. We're finally getting there. Like, I think there's something there of, like, being in a pack. This is kind of like the Earl Sweatshirt album, where it's like there's certain themes that keep coming back specifically. Then we get to Moonrise Kingdom. And, oh my god. Yo. Yo. I wrote down, this is the incredible over the topness shit that I fucking crave. This is that sort of, yeah, oh, Evanescence. This is like, <laughs> you know, cause it's so intense and it's completely just sung. The, oh man, where it has the, where, where, where they say the one line where, where they say, you gotta run and then the beat kicks in real hard. Like, cause it go, it is, it's like an extra bar of silence. 
like one more bar than you expect there to be. And then it's just, you got to run. And I was like, oh, snap. And then they said, Moonrise Kingdom only made for two. In these trees, there's no escaping truth. They think they're saving you. When that line comes in, that was just like, that was the line of, Oh, this is really important. Pay attention, because we're fucking, like, there's, there's, like, you know, fucked up motivations going on right now. You know what I mean? Like, we're telling you a story. And then when I looked into it, I found out it was based on, like, what their writing is actually based on Moon, uh, Moonrise Kingdom, the movie. And I found out the plot of it, and I was like, oh my god, no, I want to watch this movie. <laughs> I think it's dope that a Wes Anderson film can inspire a song like this it's unexpected to for that type of film to be an inspiration for an album that fucking goes this goddamn hard the music for this was so iconic i thought my brain was like is this from that soundtrack or something you know uh, what i yeah. mean i was thinking, like this sounds so like cool like if this isn't on that soundtrack Yo, they fucked up. They need to retroactively add this shit <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah directors cut this shit Exactly. Oh my god, man. Uh, then we got a fucking detox where I just wrote down, uh, the beats continue to bless. Oh, this is nasty, nasty. Oh, I remember this one now. Oh. But we got Moonrise Kingdom, which is like, that one too, which is also kind of an introduction to the singing on the album. Oh, which they man. do just like, it's seamless transition from rapping to singing. And it's like, effort, it's effortless in the way that like, it doesn't seem like, they're going out on a limb doing this. Like, it just sounds it's like incredible. second nature. The beat and the emotion in Moonrise Kingdom continues over to Detox, where it's another song about, like, like how Moonrise Kingdom is about, like, young love. Detox is about lost love. And it's a powerful breakup track about uh, breaking up with an ex-girlfriend. And just the imagery and the emotion in this track was... Ooh... Oh boy. They bring up the imagery of trees and wolves a lot. And one specific instance where he says, answer the call of the trees, baby. <laughs> and there's just, there's just something, like, there's certain things that they say that are just so fucking sexy. It's just like, ooh, shit. Like, you just have to hear this. Um, one lyric in particular, uh, how are they expecting me to detox when I still can see you dancing in your knee socks? And right. Something about that energy was just so, just like, ooh, ooh. It's, it's, so, like, <laughs> spe it's so specific. <laughs> when I see you like, dancing, how, how am I supposed to stop? How am I supposed to quit that? <laughs> and when I was reading on Genius, I think this was the first time I noticed that that one of the characters, because one of the characters is just Hayes, but I wasn't really able to pick up a difference there. But then there was another character. One was Rose and another one was Rain. Right? Yeah, there was, like, a character that was, like, the god of the trees, which would explain why trees come up so often. But okay. another thing I, I noticed came up a lot are knees. Angel Hayes grew up in a super religious environment, which mm. they had actually described as a cult, which is why the escape from the family life is so important, and the escaping to the... Oh, and the escaping God. to the wolves... <laughs> Yo, that just put a whole bunch of pieces of the puzzle together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so when they first started out, uh, Angel Hayes was trying the the gospel singer route, which didn't pan out. But it's interesting how they use the knees imagery in like a sexual tense and also like a praying on your knees tense, and it comes up and it flip flops so much. I think I heard the word knees on this album more than any other any other word. It came up so much to that it had to be intentional. You know, like, there's no way you'd be repeating this word in this many songs if it didn't have some sort of importance or symbolic nature uh, to an overall message. Going Places was the first song I thought didn't interest me as much with Wait, the lyrics. Wait, you mean Dark flow. Places? Dark Places, yeah. The beat, that slowed down, ethereal, sort of trippy beat, like, that was the star of the show for me on that one. I thought the lyrics were kind of a bit on the nose, almost to the point where it was kind of just kind of holding my hand through it. And I was used to more out there, kind of taking more risks, I guess. So in the sense of, like, the other, um, compared to the other love songs anyway... Uh, Dark Places was my least 
favorite, but even then, I still fuck with it really hard because of that fucking beat. Um, it just wasn't on the same par as Detox or Moonrise Kingdom, in my opinion. I feel like the poetry in here was incredible. There was one lyric. Uh, you know what it is? Th- this lyric was just so good. I was just like, yo, that I can't not give this a good rate. He just made something that low. There's one specific lyric where they say, uh, I feel like a wandering soul with no place in this world. I'm trying but having no luck. I don't have one soul I trust. I'm starting to feel like empty is safer than love. Mm. That hit so hard, man. Empty. That is good. Is safer than love. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and that played into a lot of the themes on this album of wanting to be alone because at least I would I won't be hurt. When it goes back to the solitude of the of the woods and yeah, feeling man. safe because there's no one else around. This back to back, the eulogy into gods. The the choruses are fucking mwah! Again, chef kiss to the fucking chorus <laughs> on eulogy and uh, and gods. Uh, my heartstrings are broken. My lungs can't stop smoking for you. <laughs> you! For you. You! Like, oh my god. Oh! This was their, uh, uh, titanium. You know? Yeah! They're yeah. trying to make the big, over the top, bombastic hit, you know? But here's the thing I like it. <laughs> I was yeah. like, I heard exactly what they were going for. I was like, I know what you're doing. You're trying to make the big hit for 2015. But I fuck with it, though. Actually, I'm, I'm completely fine with what you're doing, because you're doing it right. <laughs> there was one track, Bruises was the pop-structured leading single track, mm. I thought. Okay. Uh, but it was still on par in quality uh, with the other songs. That one just felt like it was like verse-chorus type, and it sounded that much more like a pop song. But I would be remiss to skip over Babe Ruthless the second... <laughs> After Yo. Wolves of just going for the fucking throat, hype as fuck brag track. Just, I love the beat. The flow was great. And after Gods, I was not ready for this one. <laughs> oh my god. We, uh, shit. Let's not forget about Gods. Yeah, <laughs> oh that's true. Goodness. Yo, when they came in, just the imagery, just the way yeah. this was set up. This is art, man. Being with the flowers, baby, running around in spring with you, dancing on your pedestal, praying to your crescent moon, and just the, I remember, I remember, I remember. And then that's when the real shit got, so it's like, that wasn't even the verse, that was just the introduction, and it just, it just laid out this beautiful imagery right in your head, so it's like, ah, oh, that was beautiful, man. Like, I honestly felt like I got the, um, you know, when you go on a ride and, and, and on a theme park ride and they, you have all the parts of the attraction to show you, you know, it's not really the ride itself, but it's part of the ride to show you all the cool little stuff. Like, if it's like a, 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 a Superman ride or something like that, you know, they have like lots of Superman characters and shit all the way around. So, you know, when you're waiting on the line, you know, oh. you can see all the cool shit. You know what I'm trying yeah. to say? Like, yeah, they got the fucking shit playing on TVs as they're in the line. Yeah, like, like I'm, I'm trying to find a way to say, like, it just set up. It was the setup for, like, okay, here's where we are. We're in a beautiful meadow. This is what it is. And now let's get started. <laughs> you know? It was incredibly touching and also super catchy. Like, I love when a song can do both. Where a song can be, like, you can fuck with the song as a catchy pop tune if you wanted. But... Also, if you fucking actually tuned in and listened to the lyrics, it kind of offers that to you also. Like, it can appeal to both types, like, like both sides of your brain, so to speak. Um, yeah, fuck Babe Ruthless. I don't even know what to say about those. It's just... I'm in the clouds. I'm just chilling at Jesus' feet. Rapping like, Lord, they don't know I'm the trilogy. He was like, child, I told you to steal his peace. I walked on water and these hoes still don't believe. I gave him bread, gave him fish from the spoiled sea. I, I healed the sick and they still put them thorns in me. I was like, oh, okay. Okay, we're going here too. <laughs> yeah, that again, fucking tapping back to that like religious upbringing. Like, yes, how yes. Every so often there's like religious imagery and shit that kind of creeps its way in. It's so, it's, it's, it's so good and... Especially starting after Bruises, um, which was more toned down in intensity, but was still a lot of fun. You get exposed and the woods, and they're just so haunting. Yeah, man. More haunting somehow than the rest of the album has led up to. (laughs) Like, 
Wow. Like, I was not ready for Exposed. It still gets back. <laughs> Somehow. This fucking album manages to, it keeps exceeding your expectations. It's amazing. It's so good. Just the fucking beat in Exposed, which had that, like, reversed breath sample in it. Ooh. It was like, <gasps> like I oh. forgot when it happened oh, the first time. it was so time. creepy. I loved oh, that. Oh, man. Ooh. And instead of having a chorus, it just had more haunting instrumental. Ah, oh, that was fucking oh. glorious. Look, shout out. Get this fucking album. <laughs> this is one of these, I'd be like heartbroken if I found out it didn't have a fucking uh, physical copy. Because I want this <laughs> in my collection so bad. I don't mind it, but the album does have a lot of issues of uh, uh, easing you into things. Like... Gods into Babe Ruthless is just like a fucking punch in the face. It's the lot, goddamn yeah. beginning of that. Uh, it's the beginning of that Gorillas music video. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I forgot about that damn thing. <laughs> I'm over here making goofy faces at my sunglasses, and here Angel Lays is from the offside of the fucking boxing glove. Just pow. <laughs> and uh, like I said before, fucking the woods works as such a good. Uh, kind of explanation because the whole point is like, what the fuck are you doing out in the woods? <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I I mean, like, yeah, sure, I love nature, but I wouldn't fuck with it like that. Like, I need, you know. But then all of a sudden, it's like, no, man, I was like running away from this like toxic family environment, and like, I still feel really bad that I was too young to help the situation, and I just had to get out. And it's like, oh. That fucking song was so fucking powerful, and all I have written down is, that is how you end an album. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. You got soulful R&B with, like, a slick trap beat in there. Oh, it had everything. It was out of this world. It had soul, emotion, sick beat. Like, I know we already gave the fucking strong recommendation, but um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I've, I've I, got I, the... Fu- I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh go on. Uh, I'll give I've it a. F- <laughs> we're, we're really gonna do the stalemate right now, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, well, no, you no, just you, go, no, you. Just go. <laughs> no, sir. I say. <laughs> I insist. I wouldn't dream of it. Um. <laughs> just fucking say it. <laughs> I've got written down the four, uh, just because there were some that uh, that weren't on the same level, but. It's still a fucking buy this shit today recommendation for me. I give it a four and a half mm. only because, man, those first three tracks, bro. I, I feel like, you. I feel It's ya. not like they were even whack, but when you then look at the rest of the album, can you really come back to those first three tracks? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could. <laughs> I, I, I would skip D-Day, but... I, I I know what you mean, especially if like you're really here for that, uh, for that underlining story and all that. That really doesn't kick in until the fourth track. But man, I think this is a solid as fuck album, and it's a crime that more people aren't talking about it. Man, more people need to know about this fucking album. They need to know it exists. This needs those spins. This needs the fucking streams. Patreon is 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 bringing these uh, important artists to our attention, man. They're breathing the life back into these forgotten albums, too, <gasps> which is like <laughs> fucking every so often, man. It's like good for you, Devin. Thank you so much for fucking reminding <laughs> me of this one. And if you want to be a cool kid, uh, like either of the people who requested uh, the albums on this week's show, uh, uh, as I mentioned before. All you gotta do is head on over to patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse uh, for details on how you can request an album to be reviewed on the show. About wraps it up this week. Follow us on YouTube, obviously. Subscribe to our channels. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, check us out on Patreon. Check out our merch collections on Teespring. And until next week, for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic, And we've got new merch. New <laughs> I figured we might as well shout it out because, especially since we have a, a review of someone named Granddad, I figured it was appropriate. <laughs>